Let's get to the welcome mat brought to you by Northlands Golf Course. Let's get into it. I don't know if it was malicious. Probably not. But I do know it was another WTF moment. My question to ownership would be, was it worth it? And the architect, and I use that term loosely, given there wasn't much architecture, more finger painting with this team. It's like the running of the Bulls in Pamplona. You know someone is going to get hurt. That's what you all need to understand here. Right now. Oliver Ekman Larson is a good player. No longer a great player, but a good player. And barring a big injury or steep decline, a serviceable player for the next two to three years. He's being paid like a great player. So I can understand why Jim Rutherford and Patrick Alvin are exploring a trade, according to these reports. That said, I also find those reports comical. Who is going to trade for a contract that has five years remaining, takes the player to age 35, averaging $7.26 million per year with total monies owing at nearly $40 million. It's why we're asking on our Bodog poll question whether you would trade OEL for no return, just to rid the team of the contract. 2,500 votes in and 85% of respondents are saying they would. The 85% gets that OEL money can be better deployed elsewhere. That gaining seven and a quarter million dollars of cap space per year for the next five years is the asset the Canucks would be receiving back. And admittedly, this poll is fantastical. I cannot see a team taking on the full freight of this deal too long, too too much risk, even at the cost of nothing. If the Canucks are intent on moving Ekman Larson, First, they need his consent, as he has a full no-move clause. And I'll remind you, he put just two teams, Vancouver and Boston, on his trade list last time. Then they'll need to eat money, probably a fair bit of money, say a million dollars or about what the Arizona Coyotes ate to send OEL here. And, of course, that will handicap the Canucks cap for the next five years. And even with all that, they'll still need one missing element an acquiring GM who is Jim Benning desperate. That's welcome at for today. We invite your feedback, the feedback channels as follows on email live at scaresomeprice.com. You can tax seven, seven, eight, four, zero, two, 90, six, 80 to the great clips inbox. Great clips. Your local great clips salon is proudly Canadian owned and operated. Shout out Clinton, Pat. On Twitter, at Matt Sikaris, at Sikaris and Price, and the welcome out of presentation of Northlands Golf Course, Metro Vancouver's premier public golf course. We're celebrating 25 years of great golf up on the North Shore this year for Northlands. A reminder, there are balls strewn across the course, golf balls with the Sikaris and Price logo. If you happen upon one, return it to the pro shop. You'll get a gift from us and a gift from Northlands. Download the Northlands app. App. They've got a tea time standby on the home screen there. So you want to time at a certain time of day for a certain number of players, you'll get a notification if somebody cancels. And then, of course, you can book 90 days in advance. Details at golfnorthlands.com. We use the word ruthless with Boudreaux Blake. This was take some ruthlessness, too, because you you're pretty much pushing OEL out here, right? By 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 allowing this news out, or what do you mean? By making the trade? Well, I think if you're gauging interest on OEL, the next step is that you're having a very frank conversation with OEL about how he's not wanted, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think you bother with that conversation, though, No, until you're pretty darn sure you got an advantageous trade for yourself. If any of that is murky for you at this point, you don't bother poisoning the well any further. But if you think you can position yourself for an advantageous trade that you think he might be a party to, remember, he's got a no-move clause, mm -hmm. then then you, uh, you, you go and have that conversation. But I think that uh, finding that advantageous trade where you are okay with the ramifications down the road in terms of you know, dead money on your books for years and years and years to come. Yeah, I, I, 
I just don't see a world in which it's possible either. I, I actually don't even know where you start there. No. Like, do, do you start with teams and then go to OEL and say, these teams are interested and we don't want you anymore? Would you accept one? To, or do you go to OEL and say, where would you accept the trade? Be, I mean, it's. I think both pools are particularly shallow. Is there any players in the league that are profound? They're paid more than OEL per year, but have shorter term. Like if you're trading, I, I don't even know who I'm talking about here. A guy that's got a nine million dollar cap hit, but it's only for two more years. Do you trade OEL for for that kind of guy? The, the you know the team might get salary cap relief, even though it's spread out over way more time. Like I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know either. It's uh, it's a, it's not easy. Uh, you'd have to pay somebody pretty handsomely, I think, to take that contract off your hands. Is there a Shea Weber deal to be made? But but I, I don't I don't understand. Like it, that's just an insurance relief thing, right? Like Shea Weber's not coming back, so wouldn't think so. No. So if he's on LTIR for life, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter to the Montreal Canadiens. I mean, Weber's at seven eight five for four more years after this one. So they almost sync up in terms of salary and in terms of um, freight. Yeah. And Montreal would be getting a useful player. But again, to what's the, what's the, and in Vancouver's case, you got that. That's a you cap. got that LTIR space that you're able to. But that's a cap hit now for the Montreal Canadiens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, it, it, there's not enough benefit for them. You don't think it. so? No, okay. not for that. Not for that cap hit. No, uh, uh, you just ask: Are there players who are higher paid? And so I'm just here's someone out here who is in the territory of Oliver Ekman Larson in terms of compensation. Needless to say, with a huge question mark about whether or not he is going to ever play in the NHL again, but someone that comes close to matching the average annual value I've, and the term. I've got one example here, but it doesn't win for the Canucks because there's the same amount of years left, basically. Jeff Skinner, also with a no move, $9 million a season. But he actually had a bounce back year. Jeff Skinner had a bounce back year. He had a pretty year. nice year this year. Yeah. yeah, he had a 33-goal year, so I take that back. I mean, 33 goals, you're starting to almost be worth your your price tag at that point. And yeah. Skinner's only 29 years of age, too. Yeah, and I don't think Buffalo can afford to make a – a trade like that, right? Like, if you're moving out a guy with 33 goals this summer, for if you're Buffalo, you better be getting a heck of a lot back, even if it's an onerous contract. I mean, they were playing to nearly 50% capacity this, this past year, Blake. Yeah. Like, they are an angry lot in Buffalo with regards to their hockey team and the direction it has gone under the ownership of the Pagula. So, I, uh, yeah, I, uh, I would have to think that Buffalo needs to make some good PR trades. If they're going to make a trade this summer. Yeah, I, I am very skeptical that there be any market for Oliver Ekman Larson. And if there is, then, hey, you know, I'll tip my gap to Rutherford and Alvin and the creativity that this is going to take. 